Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science here, chemistry PhD, cosmetic chemist, skincare nerd, and today I'm talking about sustainability. Sustainability and environmental impact is a huge topic everywhere these days, and it's always tricky to talk about. It's obviously something that the vast majority of us care a lot about, but a lot of companies are approaching it in a way that's easy to market, but doesn't make a lot of scientific sense. There's a ton of greenwashing going on, and you'll have seen me debunk greenwashing myths before in my videos and on Instagram. Today I'm going to be talking about a brand that I think are approaching sustainability in a really holistic, innovative, and transparent way, Emma Lewisham. This video is sponsored by Emma Lewisham, they gave me early access to information about their innovations, but as always, these are my genuine opinions. As we go through it all, hopefully you'll see why I decided to work with them. Emma Lewisham is a high-end natural skincare brand from New Zealand. I personally don't really care if the products I use are natural or synthetic, as long as they work well, and Emma Lewisham products do work really well, which I'll talk about a bit later. But first, let's talk about the really cool work they've been doing in sustainability. I think there's this pattern in how the beauty industry tends to do sustainability. Brands often point to one small thing they're doing and claim to be sustainable, and then that seems to be it. They tell you nothing about the rest of their business. And a lot of the time, that one thing seems to be environmentally friendly at first, but then isn't actually that good when you look deeper into it. Emma Lewisham approached sustainability in a much more holistic way with a carbon positive circular design business model. Let's start with carbon positive. This is kind of confusing. Carbon positive, carbon negative, and climate positive all pretty much mean the same thing. More greenhouse gases are being removed than being emitted. Generally, this is done by the business measuring their emissions and then offsetting them by investing in projects that remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Offsets can be controversial and misleading. Sometimes offsets can act like a license for businesses to keep polluting as much as they want, as long as they pay a small fee and then still look environmentally friendly. And it's impossible to offset all of our current emissions. Reductions still have to happen. Emma Lewisham make it clear that reducing emissions is their primary focus here. They aim to eventually have nothing left to offset. They are the first business to be certified climate positive by Toyota Envirocare. They're a New Zealand government-owned science-led environmental organization. The way this certification works is very comprehensive and quantitative. To be certified climate positive, a business needs to firstly measure all their direct and indirect emissions across their value chain. This obviously includes all the emissions produced when they're consuming energy to make their products, but also for producing and transporting raw materials, transporting the finished products to customers and stores, making the product packaging, and dealing with the packaging after the product's been used. The company has to commit to reducing their emissions to line up with the Paris Agreement goals. This includes working with suppliers to reduce emissions outside of the company's direct control. These supply chain emissions are often many times higher than the company's direct operational emissions. Their progress gets monitored every third year to make sure this is a continued effort. The company offsets the remainder plus at least 25%. Then finally, the company has to invest in projects that help the wider sector or society decarbonize, make a just transition, or adapt to climate change impacts, and this is set at at least 75% of the offset amount. Unsurprisingly, there are lots of different strategies that Emma Lewisham used to get to this stage, and any of them would probably make a great marketing story on their own. For example, they use 100% renewable energy in manufacturing their products and their boxes, as well as powering their offices. Every product has a carbon emission score, they plan to halve these by 2023, and have them at virtually zero by 2030. The biggest piece of the pie, though, is packaging. Here's where the circular model comes in. Packaging is the biggest source of carbon emissions in the beauty industry. It accounts for an estimated 70%. On top of this, there's the waste issue. The beauty industry uses a lot of highly complex components in packaging because a lot of formulas, especially highly active formulas, are unstable without things like pumps and opaque containers. But this means a lot of it is too expensive to recycle, and if you just chuck it in your normal recycling bin, it ends up in landfill anyway. The result is that most beauty packaging isn't recycled, even if it claims to be 100% recyclable. To solve these issues, Emma Lewisham have created their own circular system. This new packaging produces 74% less emissions than their old single-use packaging. All of their products are refillable. Most products come in jars, there are three airless pump jars and one regular jar. 
All of these use refillable pods that slot into a base jar on top, which are designed to be used over and over. The pods are made from post-consumer recycled plastic, so it financially supports the recycling of other containers. The rest of the products come in glass bottles that are refilled with pouches. That means that you still get the benefits of glass packaging, but without having to ship that heavy, fragile container back and forth as many times. That means less emissions and lower risk of product loss. The circular part of this is that Emma Lotion accept back all of their packaging at no cost to their customers through the Emma Lotion Beauty Circle, which is available worldwide. Once you collect enough empty containers to make the shipping emissions worth it, you mail them back to Emma Lotion free of charge. Recycling is the last option, it requires more energy than reusing. When a container can't be used again, Emma Lotion pay to have it recycled through TerraCycle, a specialty recycler. Currently 79% of their packaging can be sterilized and refilled, only the pouches can't and these are recycled. This whole system is really cool and well thought out, but I think the thing that impressed me the most about this is that Emma Lotion are making all the intellectual property associated with it available publicly. This is so other brands can take advantage of their investment, especially smaller brands which wouldn't have the financial ability to switch to more sustainable practices otherwise. This includes their sterilizing processes, how they deal with recycling and returns, packaging supply info, take back procedures, carbon calculation guides, as well as the designs for their refillable packaging. Each of their molds cost $10,000 to develop, so it's not a cheap process. A lot of things in the beauty industry are kept very secret, so this is really unusual, and I think it really speaks to their real commitment to sustainability. Not just for marketing their own products as better than their competitors, but to actually make a real change in how the beauty industry works. They've also been recently endorsed by Dr. Jane Goodall, the chimpanzee researcher and environmentalist. On to the products. I've mentioned this a few times before, one of the big issues with eco-friendly brands is that a lot of the time the products don't work as well as other products on the market. And this is especially the case with products that only use natural ingredients. And if the products don't work well, people don't buy them, which means they end up having a limited environmental impact because they just can't get any market share. But Emma Lotion have cult status products, even even without that environmental aspect. They've also hired an independent testing lab to perform in vitro lab studies on cells, as well as clinical studies on actual human skin to make sure their products are effective. The details are on their website. A side note, Emma Lotion did start off as a brand that marketed themselves as clean, but they've changed their focus radically, partly because they watched my content. I was reluctant to work with them at first because of their clean marketing, even though their environmental initiatives and their products sound really cool. But I think they're genuinely trying to fix that part of their marketing Marketing. Every time I go to their website, I see less and less stuff that I have an issue with. Emma Lotion are best known for their highly active natural products. Their most famous product is probably the Skin Reset. This is a brightening serum for people with hyperpigmentation issues. It has the super popular ingredient niacinamide or vitamin B3, as well as a patented stem cell extract that's been found to have really interesting activity in vitro. There are also a bunch of hydrating ingredients like prickly pear and sea buckthorn oil, Edelweiss extract, and hyaluronic acid. Skin Reset was developed when Emma was looking for an alternative to hydroquinone to use when trying for a baby. Hydroquinone isn't recommended when you're pregnant. Skin Reset's been tested on melanocyte cells against nine other competitor serums. It was the only one that was found to be active, but without also killing the cells. Obviously, the way that products work on your skin isn't the same as how they work on cells in a dish, but it's a promising sign. Skin Reset has also been tested on people's skin. After 12 weeks, 88% of participants said they noticed no new hyperpigmentation. 77% rated it as effective at reducing hyperpigmentation. The big reason Skin Reset is so popular is that it's really gentle while still being effective. This is my favorite product from the range. I get a lot of pigment after I have acne and almost every brightening serum I have is irritating, apart from my niacinamide products. This has niacinamide with a bunch of other stuff as well, and I don't need to use a moisturizer with it. Emma Lotion's other really famous product is the Supernatural 72 Hour Cream. This is an intensely hydrating night cream with anti-aging actives that help with skin firming and texture. The star anti-aging ingredients are Bacutiol and Alaria Esculenta seaweed extract. Much like with Skin Reset, these don't cause as much irritation and sensitivity as a lot of other anti-aging actives tend to do. And again, there are lots of other really moisturizing ingredients too, like Saccharide Isomerate, a super effective humectant that holds onto water and gives skin prolonged 72 hour hydration. It shows up in a lot of Emma Lotion products. Again, Supernatural outperforms a lot of leading luxury anti-aging skin 
skincare products in in vitro cell studies, and it has impressive clinical results as well. I really enjoyed this cream over winter. It has a really rich texture that spreads over skin easily, so you don't need a lot to hydrate skin really well. There's also the Supernatural Face Oil. This has anti-aging plant ingredients like Bacutriol and Swertia Chirata Extract. They're in a really luxurious oil base that's full of linoleic acid from rosehip oil and Kalahari melon oil. There's also the Illuminating Brighten Your Day Cream. This has plant extracts with vitamin C and AHAs. Yes, you can use hydroxy acids during the day, as well as hydrating saccharide isomerate and ceramides. The Illuminating Exfoliant is a creamy, hydrating wash-off product with jojoba wax beads and hydroxy acids. The Illuminating Oil Cleanser is lovely and rich and melts away makeup really easily. Skin Shield is an SPF 30 zinc oxide sunscreen. Unfortunately, like most other zinc oxide products, there is a slight white cast with this. Otherwise, it's really nice. It has a moisturizing texture and lots of active and hydrating ingredients. The products are all really luxurious. They do have a botanical base fragrance, which is a bit on the stronger side. Pretty typical strength for natural skincare, but if you're used to more clinical brands, then it might be a bit of a change. So overall, I'm really impressed with this system. I think Emolution have done a lot of amazing work in developing natural skincare that's really effective, and then also this incredible carbon positive business model. The refillable packaging and the systems for making sure customers can easily complete the circle is really well thought out. A lot of circular systems in beauty fail because that link is missing. It needs to be as easy as possible for consumers to do their part. And on top of that, sharing the IP as well is just really fantastic. There's so much that's not transparent in the beauty industry, it's really hard to work out what brands could or should be doing, especially for small companies that are just starting out. I think a lot of us are getting pretty frustrated with how the beauty industry tends to claim it's being environmentally friendly by pointing to small isolated actions that aren't particularly well thought out or evidence-based. But I think Emma Lewisham is a good example of how a beauty brand can operate differently, and I hope other brands can take inspiration from this and re-examine how they run their operations. I've linked a bunch of resources about Emma Lewisham's products and systems below. I've also got more info on the carbon positive certification. Like, subscribe, notification bell, for Follow me on Instagram, check out my blog, and I'll see you next time to nerd out more.